wild, vast reaches of space, missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander in Chief of the Space Patrol. Space Patrol is presented by Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa in the bright red can and those terrific Nestle's chocolate bars. You'll never succeed in what you're planning. No? Just what is it we're planning? That's obvious. You intend to send that android duplication of me back to Terra with Happy. You expect it to assume my place. And you'd have control of the space patrol. That's exactly right, Corey. As far as you've gone. What do you mean? You will also exert your influence on the Secretary General himself. What? Through your android double, of course. And the Secretary General will be convinced that his presence is required here urgently to keep this system from declaring war on yours. When you get him here? <laughs> you know the answer to that just as well as I, Corey. And think of the power that we will have then when the elected head of your government is actually an android duplicate of the Secretary General himself. <laughs> Stand by for exciting action on the androids of Algo in just one moment. Gee, Commander, you look so skinny and tired. So do you, Happy. We're really in bad shape. Hey, you know what? We were working so hard that we skipped breakfast. Of course. Well, come on. Let's remedy that right now. <laughs> That's better. Mm, you said it, Commander. A big breakfast topped off with a good hot cup of Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa, and I'm feeling like my old self again. Space patrollers without a good breakfast don't have the proper pep for work or play, but with it, you've got all the strength and power a space patroller needs. And this is probably the most important item. A big, steaming hot cup of Nestle's Cocoa. And Nestle's is rich with whole milk and sugar. Nestle's is so easy to fix, too. Look. Just one. Two, three spoonfuls in the cup. Add hot water. There, it's made. And Nestle's is so delicious because of that sensational chocolate bar flavor that kids of all ages are crazy about. Now don't go without that big important breakfast, fellas and girls. Ask mom for the big red can of Nestle's Ever Ready. The instant cocoa with a chocolate flavor that's out of this universe. Nestle's. solar system, under the system of planets orbiting around the star known as Algol, a tubular magnetic coupler extends from the airlock of the Terra 5, flagship of the Space Patrol, to a small dilapidated craft which hovers beneath it. Inside the smaller ship, Cadet Happy gently places a girl on a makeshift bunk. The girl lies motionless. How is she, Happy? Not too good, Commander. She doesn't seem to respond to any of the first aid treatment that Major Robertson gave her. Seems to be in a coma. Yeah, it's probably just exhaustion and malnutrition. The way that guy Arachna treated his prisoners and... Well, smoking rocket, she's a girl. Well, don't worry, Happy. I managed to contact the space doctor in this area. She'll be getting the medical attention she needs very soon. Oh, that's great, sir. Doctor's going to rendezvous with me at this position, so I won't have to fire up this derelict again. I'm glad of that, sir. I sure wasn't looking forward to traveling much of a distance in this old crate. Well, you weren't going to anyway, Happy. Huh? I want you to go with Robbie, take those passengers back to Terra. Then you can go back here in Terra 5 all by yourself and pick me up. Oh, yes, sir. Now, uh, what do we do with this ship? Oh, we'll uh, blast it with a missile. Hey, hot rockets. We get some target practice. You, you better blast off, Hap. Even in star drive through hyperspace, you'd better hurry. Yes, sir. I'm on the way. You know, Commander, uh, I bet you'd be kind of pretty if you didn't have such a dirty face. 
I'm leaving. All right, Major. The coupler's all right. We're ready to blast off now. Manicori calling Terra 5. Yes, sir. You were right. I was, sir. About what? She is pretty. <laughs> A happy landing on Terra. And don't spare the rockets getting back here. solar system. The Terra 5's gravimagnetic star drive cuts in. The sleek battle cruiser leaps ahead, thrust forward with tremendous acceleration to plunge into timeless hyperspace. Destination, home planet. Why don't you say something? No, I was waiting for you to be shocked. I'm a little surprised. Or well, you wouldn't have that gun. Aren't you even curious? Don't you wonder at the ingratitude of what you yourself see from slavery? Turning a gun on you? Well, it doesn't matter. You see, I'm not letting you keep that gun. his responsibility to the passengers and prisoners. Happy makes one stop before blasting off on his return trip to pick up funds to the office of the elected head of the United Planets, the Secretary General. Yes, I heard all about the success of your mission. Congratulations, Happy. I'm very proud of you and the Major, and Commander Corey. Thank you very much, sir. But uh, I'm afraid Commander Corey won't be very proud of me if I don't get back there to pick him up on time. All right, Happy. On your way, and be careful. Yes, sir. Oh, Happy, tell Buzz I'm expecting all three of you for dinner after you get back. Right, sir. I want to hear all about your experience in the algo system. to the file. Eula, here you are, and looking like...
like yourself again. Oh, and I feel much better, Ramo. I couldn't wait to get out of those filthy clothes Arachna made me wear in his foundry. Oh, but it was worth it. It was, eh? And you said something about a plan you have now. Does it concern this man you brought back with you? This man, as you call him, is not just any man, Ramo. He's Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of Space Patrol of the United Planets. United Planets? I met other prisoners in Arachnus Foundry, Ramo, and some of them were from this United Planet, and they told me about it. It's a very prosperous system, many light miles from here, with fertile planets, just the kind of place we've always dreamed of owning. Oh. And this, uh, this commander, is he one of their leaders? Of the highest reputation. Ah. And I've been told on very friendly, personal terms with the Secretary General of this United Planet. Secretary General? The top authority of the entire system. The elected head of the government. Elected? <laughs> well, our androids will change that, eh, Yuna? Mm, easily, Ramo. As easily as they've given us control of this barren system. So cut on that too soon. We've recovered from the paralyzer race sooner than I expected. Yuna! The android! Android, attack. Android, attack. It's useless to struggle with an android. Android? Yes, Commander. A manufactured robot. Constructed of protoplasm, constructed so cleverly that he defies detection. You see, each one is actually a reproduction of a living human being, as you will soon see. What are you doing? You see, the androids receive their orders by telepathy, Commander. This is a mental booster. It uh, amplifies the electrical impulses of my brain waves, like this. <laughs> Don't struggle against the story. It's no use. Besides, it'd be much more interesting to see what we're going to produce. Produce? What are you talking about? Why, another android in your image. It will have no emotion, but otherwise it will be an exact duplicate of you. a perfect duplicate of you, an android double, a perfect reproduction. <laughs> and the people of your home planet will never be able to tell the difference. Controllers. Today we're going to have a contest to find out who's better in the galley, the fellas or the girls. This is Issa Ashdown. She's 11 years old. And this is Tony Sides. He's also 11 years old. As you can see, they have cups and spoons and cans of Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa and hot water. Now, when I give the signal, they're going to start to make a cup of Nestle's Cocoa, and we'll see who's the faster. You all set, kids? Yes, sir. Roger, Captain Barkley. Okay. Go! Okay, space patrollers, they're off. Keep your eye on their spoons there. Now watch them, watch them. They're putting one, two, three spoonfuls in the cups. Now they're adding hot water. Wow! Did you ever see such speed as that? Right here by my watch, exactly seven seconds. And I'd call it a tie, too. Well, with speed like that, I guess the only thing I can say is that both fellas and girls are masters of the galley. Now, um... Let's see who can take the first drink of cocoa. Uh, Rock, 
pockets. <laughs> Another tie. Well, here is a Nestle prize for each of you. Gee, thanks, Captain Barkley. We just love Nestle's because it's so easy to fix. Nestle's is a complete cocoa. It's got rich whole milk and sugar already in it. And around our house, we all go for Nestle's because it's got that same sensational flavor as Nestle's chocolate bars. And wow, that's really something. Ah, you're so right, Tony and Issa. Nestle's is easy to make and it's mighty delicious. So, gang, why don't you ask Mom to start you on the space patrol routine? That's a big cup of hot Nestle's cocoa for breakfast to get your energy up and for other meals and for snacks. This is the box to look for. It's that big red one that says Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa. That's Nestle's with the chocolate flavor that's the best in the universe. And now, back to Space Patrol! Commander Corey calling Jet Happy aboard Terra 5. Come in. Happy here, sir. Go ahead. We'll not be able to meet in space as planned. Well, no, there's, there's nothing wrong. Well, what is it then? After the doctor administered to the girl, Eula, she fully recovered. Hey, I'm sure glad to hear that, sir. She then invited me to visit her planet. You mean you're there now? That's where you're calling me from? I want you to pick me up here. Now listen carefully and I'll give you the planet's position. Go ahead, sir. It's in the alcohol system, the third planet from the star. Yes, sir. Proceed to the light side. It's daytime here now. Startling, isn't it, Corey? You see yourself standing there? Hear your voice coming from an android double? You could almost believe there are two of you. <laughs> no, don't, don't, Corey. You can't break an android's hole. And you won't succeed in what you're planning. We won't, then. And just what is it we're planning? It's obvious. Send that, that android duplication of me back to Terra with Happy. You assume it'll take my place. That way you'd gain control of the space patrol. You're absolutely right, Corey, as far as you've gone. What do you mean? You're also going to exert your influence on the Secretary General himself. What? Yes, through your android double. And your Secretary General will be convinced that his presence is required here, urgently, in order to prevent this system from declaring war on yours. And when you get in here? <laughs> you know the answer to that one just as well as I do. And just think of the power we'll have then, Corey. When the elected head of your government is actually an android duplicate of the Secretary General himself. <laughs> Raymond, you talk too much. Come here. Yes, Eula. The cadet has landed his ship. He has? Well then, we must instruct the android immediately. I've already done that. His orders and destructions he has to the minutest detail. He is perfect. Are you sure? Of course. Even his own cadet won't know the difference. Ready to leave the ship. There's a time. We must blast off at once. Blast off at Commander. I thought you'd get a chance to look over this alien civilization. We must get back to Terra immediately. Stand by for vertical blast off. Standing by, sir. You act like something's wrong. We've got to get the Secretary General and bring him back here to negotiate with Eula and her people. Negotiate? They're declaring war on the United Planet. War? Smoking rockets. Closed ports. Closed ports. Fire jets. Fire jets. Now 
world. There's nothing more for us to do, but we... We may as well do it in comfort. Not here, where we have to look at the unhappy face of our friend. You won't get away with this. Oh, don't feel badly, Commander. The android we sent in your place is a perfect gentleman. He won't disgrace you. <laughs> Very serious, sir. Only your immediate presence can prevent it. Do you uh, think it could be a trap? No, sir. They merely want to negotiate. Well, Buzz, I've never gone wrong yet in trusting your judgment. Let's go. A few moments later, the Terra 5 is speeding through hyperspace, carrying the Secretary General into a treacherous trap. For the head of the United Planets government has placed his trust not in Buzz Corey as he thinks, but in a robot, an android duplication of his friend. Android, stop! Well, you know it worked. Maybe I can make a friend out of you. Put that disc down, Corey. Or this gun drops you. What's going on? He almost got away. Then take no more chances. Put him behind the electric barrier. Get moving. From here, from here, Corey, you go no place at all. As I said, Corey, from here you go no place at all. Raymo, come here, quickly. Quickly, be sure everything is in order. The Secretary General is here. Are you sure this is the right place, Bud? Yes, sir. This is the place. Come in, please. Yes, thank you. What? Well, it looks like a conference room. A place for negotiating. Yeah. Uh, what's this thing here? Oh, don't touch any of that. <laughs> You'll find out about that soon enough. All right. Suppose we get down to business. What's this all about, anyway? Just keep your eyes open. Hey, uh, Commander, where are you going? Commander? Hey, Commander, what are you, what are you going in there for? Commander! Commander! Let go! Let go! What are you doing? What, what happened to Commander Corey? That wasn't Commander Corey, my dear Secretary General. Perhaps you'll find it hard to believe, but you were brought to us by an android duplicate of your friend. What? What are you saying? What have you done to the Commander? Oh, he's all right. We never do anything to the original in case anything happens to the duplicate. And I'm afraid you're next, my dear Mr. Secretary. Look here, I, I won't have this. I, I don't know whether you're telling the truth or not, but I won't have it. Hey, Commander! Commander, where are you? Commander! Go ahead. Might change your plan. Oh, get in. Hey, Raymond, the boat! Hey, Commander, the boat! Get away! Everything's all right now, sir. Buzz, is it really you this time? Yes, sir, this time. I'm sorry about all this, sir, but everything's under control now, and we have the, the androids under control. Amazing. That android looks so much like you. I, I'm not sure it's even it's you yet. Smoking rockets, the way things have been going on around here, I don't even know whether I'm me. 
first I thought it was the commander, and uh, then I didn't know whether it was the commander. I thought it might have been a, a, an android or something, and I thought, sure, it was an android. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure, which will be brought to you by Hot Ralston and Bite Size Wheat Checks, two famous cereals from Checkerboard Square. Hello, children. Here is Professor Checkerboard to remind you once more to send in your special ways of eating Hot Ralston. If you remember last time I showed you our first Ralston inventor, David Jurepnik, he ate his hot Ralston with lots of crisp bacon sprinkled on top. Oh, children, I need many, many more Ralston inventors. I want you to make my head swim with ideas. Now, if your way of eating hot Ralston is selected, I will show your picture right here on Space Patrol, where Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy can see it too. So send in your Ralston inventions and picture to me Professor Checkerboard at this address, Box 2665, Los Angeles 54, California. That's Box 2665, Los Angeles 54, California. Remember, wonderful things happen to you when you eat hot Ralston. And now, Scene from next week's exciting action, Double Trouble. Corey, listen to me. The android duplicates of you and the Secretary General are being sent to Terra. There, at my will, a meeting of certain important members of the Security Council will be called. One by one, duplicate androids will be made of each of them until all the leaders of your United Planet government will be robots obey my command. Be sure to see what happens when Buzz and Happy attempt to prevent a strange invasion of the United Planets and find themselves faced with double trouble next week on Space Patrol. Space Patrol on ABC Radio every Saturday. Consult your newspaper for time and station.